I should say here that at the time I started writing the script for my ideal Templar talents, I hadn't yet heard that Templar was going to be all about the Wake of Ashes ability. That's one ability I didn't even bother to look at, let alone buff specifically, when I was putting together my so-called ideal Templar tree. Probably that's because it's a retribution-specific ability, and Templar is supposed to be just as useful for protection as it should be for retribution. Making Wake of Ashes available to protection feels... weird. It was Ashbringer's thing, and while Ashbringer isn't being wielded by Retribution anymore, it was never wielded by Protection, so it makes more sense for Retribution to have Wake of Ashes than Protection. Besides that, I personally feel like crafting a hero tree's flavor around a single ability gives that tree way too little appeal. And I also feel like Blizzard is setting themselves up to fail by having trees with such narrow appeal. They're putting all their eggs in one basket. If they make mistakes, and they do, I should know I keep making mistakes in my trees, then they could ruin the gameplay experience for players. And the way the hero talent system is set up, there are only two options for what each spec can pick. So if one of these options either has too narrow an appeal, or gets centered around a clunky, unpleasant, or weak ability or effect, then that could kill player choice. And player choice is a big part of the excitement that hero talents could generate, but one mistake could spoil that excitement altogether. And of course, if both hero trees available to a spec end up sucking, it'll be even worse. This setup, especially focusing on just one ability as the theme for a hero tree, is setting Blizzard up to fail. And it creates a force multiplier that amplifies the effect of failure to give players an even worse experience if Blizzard makes mistakes. A mistake in the class or spec talent trees wouldn't be anywhere near as bad as a mistake in the hero talents. That's why I'm calling the hero talents a force multiplier. Hero talents ought to be awesome and allow players to do cool stuff that they couldn't before. They ought to add to a game's fun rather than take away from it. And trees with broader flavor and greater applicability are going to be much more appealing and get players far more excited than trees that take a single ability and run with it. I could give an example, but I think I'll save the example for the Herald of the Sun video. I should just let you hear the Templar script that I wrote before I read that Wake of Ashes would be Blizzard's focus. Before I do, I have a couple of my own mistakes to admit to. It's not Chronomancer, it's Chrono Warden. And the Chrono Warden's Chrono Flame ability really is more nuanced than I was giving it credit for, since the amount of extra healing or damage that it does depends on how much you've done recently. But Chrono Flame still doesn't seem to set the tone for the tree the way Vampiric Strike, Lightning Strikes, or Holy Armament did. Not that those don't have their own problems, but, uh, eh, no more ado. Let's just get going with the original script. I know that I'm going to make some serious mistakes with my first iteration of the Templar tree, since I play neither Protection nor Retribution, and this tree is a blend of those two specs. Hopefully I've managed to pull together some semblance of a playable tree, or of something that can be made into something playable or useful, or even fun. At first, I struggled to come up with a theme for Templar. I was going to make it a no-nuance, just plain big and tanky and powerful spec. But eventually, I came up with a Tier 1 passive that does in fact set the tone for the whole hero tree and provide something that both Retribution and Protection can benefit from. Once I came up with that, it felt like everything started coming together. Of course, once I did come up with this Tier 1 passive that set the tone, it became another example of one idea building on another. My ideas tend to do that, to build on themselves. Which is one of the things that makes me wonder just how much a Blizzard developer can listen to players' ideas. I mean, if Blizzard might have already committed to building things in a particular way, that way of building things might utterly preclude a player's idea no matter how good the player's idea is. Yeah, I should quit yakking about design philosophies and just get to talking about what I did in my first draft so I can get the feedback already on what works and what doesn't. In Tier 1, we have Seal of Vengeance. Back in the Burning Crusade, this was a damage over time for all paladins. 
well, all alliance paladins. They still had racial abilities back in those days. Paladins didn't have any damage over time effects back in vanilla, so this felt new and exciting at the time. The fact that it was a stacking debuff, which, spoiler alert, is what's giving me doubts about the idea right now, was also seen as a good thing at the time. Warriors had Sunder Armor which stacked, and the rest of the raid knew to wait until enough stacks were on the target before starting DPS. And with a stacking debuff for paladins, everyone else knew how long to wait too. Heck, druids got a lacerate bleed ability that stacked in much the same way. Eventually, Seal of Vengeance morphed into Seal of Truth, and at some point it stopped stacking and was just a plain old damage over time called Censure. And then Legion came around and it disappeared along with the rest of the old Seal and Judgment system. I've revived Seal of Vengeance as a stacking debuff that causes the Paladin's effective damage and damage mitigation to and from the enemy to count as if the Paladin's strength were increased by a flat percentage per stack. The idea was that strength contributes both to attack power and to the damage mitigation you get from blocking. Or at least it used to. When I looked it up, it seems like it still does, or does again, or... If it doesn't, I can always add something like dodge or straight-up damage mitigation to the Seal of Vengeance debuff. The fact that it means that there's ramp-up time for Templar might be a deal-breaker in and of itself. And it's only when I buckled down to write this script, while having difficulty concentrating due to sinus allergies no less, that I realized this potential drawback. But there are ways of mitigating the ramp-up time elsewhere in the Templar talents. I won't spoil those yet, though. Plus, I've not yet nailed down just how high the stacks go. If you get the full benefit at three stacks, then I figure the ramp-up time won't be a big problem at all. The way stacks get applied is, every time an enemy takes non-periodic holy damage, a stack of Seal of Vengeance is applied, thus increasing your strength stat towards that enemy. There's plenty of sources of non-periodic holy damage for both retribution and protection. Judgment, Avenger's Shield, Shield of the Righteous, Templar's Verdict, Divine Storm, Final Reckoning, Eye of Tear, I could go on. And there'll be even more sources of non-periodic holy damage coming down the pipe in these talents too, so I don't know whether the ramp-up time for Seal of Vengeance is a bad thing or not really all that bad at all. The idea was that Templar's flavor is damage for more damage and more damage mitigation. That felt like it would be fitting both for retribution and for protection, so I just went with it. I know there's a chance that I may need to tear up this foundation and build a new one, but at least I can get feedback on what I've built so far. On to Tier 2, where we get the active abilities. And both of these active abilities provide two stacks of Seal of Vengeance when they hit enemies, which... I'd like to say that this was meant to mitigate the ramp-up time, but in reality it was to provide flavor and to make them different from abilities that they're replacing. It was only as I was writing this script after putting together the first draft that I realized the fact that they apply two stacks of Seal of Vengeance means they're helpful to mitigate the ramp-up time. But anyway, let's get started. The first one is Condemn, an explosion of holy energy around you damages nearby enemies. It replaces Divine Storm for Retribution and Shield of the Righteous for Protection. It deals additional damage and provides about the same damage mitigation that Shield of the Righteous does. It applies Seal of Vengeance or Fanaticism twice per target. It deals damage both in a cone in front of you and in a circle around you. I'm not gonna lie. Condemn is a holdover from when I was intentionally pulling in as many Diablo abilities as possible. I think that altering the shape and damage of the attack, not to mention making it apply two stacks of Seal of Vengeance and making the ability's animation different from the abilities it replaces, all make it different enough from both Divine Storm and Shield of the Righteous to make it functional as an upgrade for those abilities. Also, with Tempest of the Lightbringer, it'll apply three stacks of Seal of Vengeance and do so for multiple targets, so there you go right there. Though we haven't established whether Seal of Vengeance gets its full benefits at three stacks or not, so maybe it's too soon to celebrate, especially when we get to fanaticism, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the middle on Tier 2, we've got an Awakening talent. As I was putting this tree together, I realized I hadn't yet buffed Blade of Justice or Avenger's Shield, and there was a gap in Tier 2 as well. I drew inspiration from the Holy Awakening talent and essentially set it up so that 
every 12 casts of those abilities, which have relatively short cooldowns and can be reset randomly, you'll activate Avenging Wrath. This feels like one of my less creative ideas, just copying a talent from Holy like this, but hey, if it's fun and functional, I probably shouldn't worry too much. Besides, a sneaky way of activating Avenging Wrath is exactly what a big and powerful hero talent system like Templar ought to have in it. The second upgrade ability is Exorcism. I realized that I needed a single target upgrade as well as a multi-target upgrade in this tree, and Judgment was an obvious ability to upgrade. Again, Exorcism applies two stacks of Seal of Vengeance to targets when you cast it. It's my hope that that, plus the new animation, plus the fact that it has a shorter cooldown, will make it appealing enough and different enough from Judgment to make it worth getting. Now, I'm well aware of the fact that Blade of Justice filled the niche that Exorcism left when we went from Warlords to Legion, so in a way, it made more sense to bluff Blade of Justice to Exorcism than to upgrade Judgment to Exorcism. But the problem with that plan is... Protection doesn't have Blade of Justice. I need to pick an ability to upgrade that both Retribution and Protection have in their kits, and Judgment is it, essentially. There are two different talents that buff Exorcism, and I'll get into those next. I worry a little bit that one of them is redundant with Condemn, but we'll see. That one is in Tier 3, and it's Mass Exorcism. Exorcism strikes all nearby enemies for 50% damage with diminishing returns when striking over 5 enemies. This damage is increased to 65% if you have the Blessed Champion Retribution talent. Honestly, this talent was inspired by Glyph of Mass Exorcism in Mists of Pandaria. It's strange that I picked Judgment to upgrade and Exorcism to upgrade it too, all because I wanted the tree to buff single target damage, but then I add a talent to make it multi target. Hmm. I'm not sure if this makes it redundant with Condemn or not. Some part of me says that it doesn't. Even if they're both AoE, Condemn is a spender while Exorcism is a builder. And having both, well, if you're getting both, you're probably not going to have the talent points to get the deepest Templar talent, which is also single target, so getting both might simply be specking yourself to have the highest multi-target DPS or for protection to be able to gather or maintain threat on packs of mobs quickly if you have to. And I suppose that's the kind of option that should be available in Templar. There is a single target buff for Exorcism as well, but its name is a little bit funny. Burden of Guilt. Exorcism deals more damage, it applies an additional stack of Seal of Vengeance, its day's effect now affects humanoids, beasts, elementals, and dragons. Burden of Guilt was a talent from the earlier parts of Mists of Pandaria that caused Judgment to slow the target down. Since this is more or less doing that, I decided Burden of Guilt was a decent name for it. If I'm being honest, adding an additional stack of Seal of Vengeance was an afterthought. I like to think that giving Exorcism one single target upgrade and one multi-target upgrade is a good way to go, but... Well, I'm just guessing here. There are plenty of single-target and multi-target talent options in the Retribution Tree, and even in Protection in a few places, so probably this is okay at absolute worst, but feedback would still be appreciated. Now we go on to a talent that I am not so sure about. Fanaticism. When your Seal of Vengeance is at maximum stacks, additional applications instead grant you stacks of Fanaticism, increasing your effective critical strike chance against enemies by 1% when receiving or dealing damage. Stacking. Okay, there's a few different stages of design to talk about that led to this point here. The first stage is, hey, Fanaticism is such an awesome talent name, I have to bring it back. Second stage. Hey, crit boosts parry chance for tanks, right? I should have a stacking plus crit debuff once Seal of Vengeance hits maximum stacks. And the third stage. Okay, time to write the script for the actual video. Fourth stage. Ooh, I remember how much they hated ramp up time. That's how the old Inquisition spell that I liked so much during Cataclysm and the multiple stacks of censure disappeared, so... Maybe Seal of Vengeance wasn't such a good idea after all. Fifth stage. If Seal of Vengeance is iffy due to ramp up time, then this implementation of fanaticism is just plain stupid. 
Which leads to the current stage. Hey, why make fanaticism something you stack only when Seal of Vengeance is at maximum stacks, when you can instead have it be an additional effect that Seal of Vengeance stacks can have? Let's go with that for the first iteration. I wanted to show the full thought process so anyone giving me feedback can tell me where I went wrong, where I went right, and what I should have done instead. Anyhow, on to the condemned buffing talents, which I am not proud to admit I had a tough time coming up with, and I ended up just copying some ideas and names from Diablo 3, and then it took a moment to realize that the ideas kind of sucked. The first talent that buffs Condemn is Shattering Explosion, where enemies struck by Condemn are dazed for four seconds, and the other one is Divine Affliction, enemies struck by Condemn are briefly knocked upwards. <sighs> Divine Affliction is definitely going to look amazing in practice, and using it to interrupt casters briefly is also going to be amazing. Perhaps this is exactly what a Templar should be, now that I think about it, able to make mincemeat out of casters. It's the kind of fantasy the name implies, for sure. At first, Shattering Explosion was going to boost the range on Condemn, but that, I realize that doesn't really make as much sense as I would have liked to think. In World of Warcraft, enemies generally run towards you, with very few exceptions. Fewer now than there were in Vanilla, so there's not that much point to extending the ability's range. In trying to figure out what a better upgrade might be, I began wondering if buffing the damage to your Condemn's primary target made any kind of sense. Straight up buffing all the damage would almost always mean it's a better choice for retribution, and that the few times it's not would be big annoyances. But when I thought about it, even single target DPS buffing would tilt the damage meters and therefore probably lead to min-maxing. One thought was... Ugh, I hate to say it because I'd done this multiple times in different areas of the Templar tree, but one thought was making it apply another stack of Seal of Vengeance. But if Seal of Vengeance only stacks up to three times, then that's actually not that much of a buff at all, since for Retribution it would already be at maximum stacks for anyone with Tempest of the Lightbringer, and for Protection, one more button press of Hammer of the Righteous or Blessed Hammer would bring it up to maximum. I vaguely started to wonder if I always had to have the talent immediately below an upgraded ability to, uh, pick one of two talent that buffs the upgraded ability in one of two ways. I mean, it would be real convenient for me if I could plant whatever I wanted to here instead of having to buff the ability. Maybe, maybe instead of that increased ranged thing, I should have some other kind of utility attached to Condemn. I've thought about adding a Death Grip-like effect, but that'll make it too difficult to get away from Templars. A slow might be worth thinking about if it's fairly brief, and that's what I have in this current iteration. But some part of me doesn't like how all these talents aren't actually boosting Condemn's damage. But since Retribution would always take the damage talent, and Protection would always take the mitigation talent, if I had those talents, the only way to make a real choice here is to slap Utility onto Condemn. At least I feel like that's the only way to make a real choice. I had something different for Exorcism that was single target versus multi target, but when you're starting with a multi target spell, well, that's, that's a little harder to work in. So for the time being, I'm going to stick to slowing enemies' hit. Then again, Burden of Guilt already slows most targets that it hits, albeit not all. Maybe being able to slow an area of targets is different enough from Exorcism's single target damage to keep it from feeling like a duplicate. But I am very much open to feedback on this one. And I would like to add that there is one talent that I had thought of that didn't make it into the first draft, and that's Hammer of the Templar. Hammer of Justice knocks the target backwards 30 yards in addition to stunning them. When they added knockback effects in Wrath of the Lich King, stuff like Typhoon, Thunderstorm, Blast Wave, and Death Grip, Paladins didn't get any knockback effects, and I felt kind of left out. Adding one that takes an enemy well out of the picture for a while could make for an interesting thing, and it could feel pretty Templar-ish. I do wonder if I should just get rid of the whole pick one of two talent for Condemn and just plop Hammer of the Templar in there instead. Anyhow, we've made it to Tier 4 now. This is where the heavy hitting stuff is supposed to be. The powerful passives that you want to save and spend to get your mitts on. I hope I put some decent stuff in here, but, well, depending on the changes I've made so far, I'm not sure how good a job I've really done here. 
The first tier 4 talent that I have is actually Holy Wrath, which is immediately upon casting Consecration, a pulse of radiant damage strikes enemies within the range of your Consecration. This pulse is not considered periodic damage. Obviously, this was meant to work with Seal of Vengeance and provide yet another button you can press to get more targets to have another Seal of Vengeance stack. If Seal of Vengeance is only going to stack to 3, then I'm not sure this is worth much of anything. If it stacks to 5, maybe it's okay, but it also feels like I'm introducing one problem, the ramp-up time with Seal of Vengeance, and then trying to solve that problem in other talents when a wiser move would be to not introduce problems at all in the first place and just do cool stuff. Then again, a pulse of initial AoE damage might be just what Consecration needs to get back on Retribution's rotation. On the other hand, putting another spell in Retribution's rotation might be a problem, considering that rotation bloat is one of the reasons why Blizzard is putting all the passives all the time into the hero talents in their first iteration, even though active abilities are way cooler and... <sighs> I've tied myself in mental knots with this one, folks. At the time, I was thinking, Holy Wrath is a cool AoE ability from back in the day. In Vanilla through Wrath of the Lich King, it was an anti-undead cooldown. In Cataclysm through Warlords of Draenor, it was a protection AoE damage button. Why not bring it back? And maybe that's not such an awful idea. Heck, maybe I should have forgotten about Condemn and made Holy Wrath be the thing that Shield of the Righteous and Divine Storm get upgraded to. I can give it anti-undead flavor, I could give the whole Templar tree some anti-undead flavor, and that would be kind of fitting. Albeit I'd need to make sure I had a good root talent that works on anything. Heck, I might throw out Condemn, move Holy Wrath down there to where it is, and plop Hammer of the Templar up here. Depends on what feedback I get. The next tier 4 talent is Heavenly Strength. You gain the ability to wield both a shield and a two-handed weapon at the same time. For Retribution, your mastery boosts your chance to block, you become uncritical, and your critical strike chance boosts your parry chance. For Protection, your mastery boosts your holy damage, and the main target of your Shield of the Righteous or Condemn takes much more damage. You know what? Now I'm really glad I didn't add anything to Condemn that makes the main target take more damage. Yes, Heavenly Strength was intended to be the talent that allows Retribution Paladins to off-tank and Protection Paladins to off-DPS. But it wasn't always intended to be the off-specking talent. This is again something pulled from Diablo 3's Crusader kit, albeit a passive instead of an active ability. And my initial goal was to create something that would allow Templars to gain more strength from their gear. It was only later, when I thought about letting Holy Lightsmiths off-tank and letting Protection Lightsmiths off-heal, that I realized Heavenly Strength would be THE perfect off-spec talent. Sure hope I covered all the bases with it stat-wise. Anyhow, the final Tier 4 talent is Divine Strength. Your strength is increased by a flat percentage. This one is a no-frills, straight-up buff. If the percentage is substantial enough, it'll be the kind of thing you want to save and spend to get your hands on. You know, Vanilla had plenty of these kinds of talents, like one tier below the deepest. Holy Power used to be a plus spell crit talent in the Holy Tree rather than a resource. And one-handed weapon specialization, vengeance, the list goes on for no frills strong talents just below the deepest one. Divine Strength is intended to be similar to those talents, and both Retribution and Protection could benefit from it. Finally, we're at Tier 5, Falling Sword, a brand new active ability that doesn't replace anything else. You leap to a target and immobilize them, also placing Consecration at your feet and immediately bringing your stacks of Seal of Vengeance and Fanaticism, if you have Fanaticism, to maximum for that enemy. Again, this is another ability borrowed from Diablo III Crusaders. For the longest time, Paladins have wished for a spell that immediately takes us to a given location. Something like Charge, Heroic Leap, Death Grip, or Clash, which we players came up with for Paladins back around the time Mists of Pandaria was in development, and which Blizzard snatched away and gave to Brewmaster Monks. Grumble, grumble. Well, this is an instant gap closer, but I realized I'd need to tie it into the rest of the tree somehow and give it something that's either convenience or an opener or something that buffs DPS, so I had it instantly bring the Seal of Vengeance stacks up to maximum. 
Some part of me says that this is once again solving a problem that I introduced with Seal of Vengeance, but I don't know if Seal of Vengeance is really that much of a problem in the first place. If it's not, then I just added some excellent flavor and utility to a gap closer. Feedback on this, and on my first draft of Templar as a whole, would be very much appreciated. And in my next video, I'll talk about the other retribution hero tree, Herald of the Sun, saving my favorite for last here.